This video is going to be the TLDR on streaming in Next.js and why it matters for you. So we're going to go through a bit of an example here, but real quick, streaming allows you to progressively send kind of parts of your web page to the browser. And the benefit of this and kind of why it matters to you is that this can really help her improve user experience to where if you can just send less to the browser or send things in chunks it can allow certain chunks of your web page to be interactive and to be ready to go before other chunks of your web page so the benefit of this is that you can have part of your web page that say you have a certain component that you want to be interactive that component can be still interactive while you load maybe a slower loading component within your web page. So here in VS Code, I'm going to show you an example of this to where I created this with just npx create next app at latest. And I created two components here in a private components folder. And then I'm rendering them within the root page.jsx. So the slow loading component in this faster loading component. And basically what all these do is slow loading component. It awaits a new promise to resolve after eight seconds. And then this faster loading component does the same thing, but waits one second. And this one also renders an input. So you can see some of this like bad UX that's going to happen here without streaming. So I'm going to run npm run dev. And right now I'm not streaming these components. You can see I'm just rendering them within the page.jsx like normal components. And I just started my server here on localhost 3000. So let's go here. I'm going to refresh this page and I'm going to also keep my network tab open over here. And the page is now all loaded up here, but we have this slow loading component and this faster loading component that renders an input. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh it again, but I'm going to start using this input and then wait to see what happens when everything finishes loading. So I'm going to click, I'm going to actually just do command shift R to refresh. You can see it's refreshing. And then here for this faster loading component, I'm going to start using this input because the user might think everything's ready to go right now. But you can see once everything finishes loading here, and let me show the JavaScript getting loaded in here as well. But once everything finished loading there, it clears the input. And now the user has to like retype stuff. So let me show you that again. Command shift R. And then I'll start typing this input, but everything's not loaded yet because now it loads in. You can see the JavaScript get loaded in over here and it clears my input, which would be a highly frustrating user experience. So how can we just send this component as a chunk to our web page here? So we're just sending this part of our web page to make this like fully interactive here while we kind of load in this slower loading component at like a, a later time. How can we do that? Well, we can use suspense, which is kind of what you can do to implement streaming in Next.js. So I'm going to close my terminal. And then all we need to do to do this is I can use suspense importing that from react and then we need to set a fallback and this is going to be the fallback is the the component that you want to render when the child component is still loading so i'm going to just render a p tag here but you can maybe render a skeleton component or some sort of loading component and i'm going to say loading slow loading component render the closing tag of suspense I'm going to do command X, command V, and I will, I'll push this code to GitHub if you want to play around with it and I'll link it in the description. And then I'll do the same thing for this other component. So I'll do suspense, with a fallback that's equal to, and I'll say loading, faster loading component. And then we need to make sure to close that. And then what you want to do is wrap suspense around the component that's going to be taking a little bit longer to load. If I come back and I'm going to just, I'm going to 
refresh just to make sure that like the code is ready to go. But once this is good to go here, I'm going to clear the network tab and I'm going to refresh it again just to make sure I have a nice clean state to start from. So it's ready to go here. So now if I do command shift R, you see it's, it's loading that component down here for a split second for one second. And now it's ready to go, but it's still loading the top component. So it loads this bottom component. I'll do it again. Command shift R. It's loading this bottom component component for one second. And then it's still loading this top component. So once we see this component, it's, it's ready to go and it's ready to be interactive and it will still load that top component or the slower loading component in at a later time. So we're basically streaming this chunk and then this chunk. So if I do command shift R and now this time, once this input shows up, I'm going to start typing in it and let's see if the text goes away once the slow loading component is finally rendered. So command shift R, we have our input, I'll type. And then what you're going to see is that once this slow loading component finally comes in, this does not get cleared. We still have this fully interactive component and it's ready to go because previously it was just kind of showing this input, but it wasn't actually like hydrated and ready to go. But this time, this faster loading component, it is hydrated and it's interactive and ready to go because we are streaming it. Now, to kind of show you a very similar example, but just like a different way to show it, let's now instead, I'm going to command X, the suspense and slow loading here, but we're going to render it within the faster loading component just to show you what the effect can be of loading like a slower component within a faster component. So let's go to slow loading component, actually fast loading component, and let's render in our slow loading, but let's get rid of suspense for now. And let's just render this slow loading component here, making sure to import that as well. So what kind of user experience are we gonna see now that we're loading a slow loading component within this faster loading component. Well, let's see. Right now we see loading faster loading component, but you can see it takes a long time. So we're gonna see, instead of just taking one second here, it still takes the full eight seconds. And that's because we are just rendering the slower loading component within the faster loading component, which is still hurting performance of both components. So we can fix this the same way. We can just wrap this in suspense, fallback. I don't know why it did that for autocomplete, but we will render a P tag here, loading, slow loading component. And then we will put our slow loading component within it. And so you just wrap suspense around the component you want to stream, and then you provide a fallback. And now if we come back, I'm going to clear my console here. I'm going to do command shift R. And what you're going to see is we see the faster loading component after one second, and then the slower loading component, it will come in after that eight second wait. If I do command shift R and then I start using my input and we wait for our slower loading component to come in, we should see it works just like it did before. It doesn't clear this input because it still makes this chunk kind of all ready to go and all hydrated and the slower loading component just comes in at a later time. So you can see here in this kind of, yeah, I get it. It's like a contrived small example for you know, the sake of this video, but it really can help improve the UX of your application and it can improve the overall performance as well. So I think it's definitely something to be aware of and to at least kind of know how it works. And I think it can really help out your user experience, especially if you have like just a slower loading component that maybe it makes a lot of API calls and it just takes a long time to render. Well, Wrapping that thing in suspense and progressively loading your page like this can really be helpful. So I hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for checking it out and I'll see you in that next one.